Killing the demons of likes and dislikes. The yogi attains eternal peace, rejoicing in the self. So, this is two lines Ramayan by Adishi Prachala. Yes, just put the spiritual significance of Ramana in two lines. Please think about this. If you look into all the methods which are very popular nowadays in mainstream related to spirituality, mindfulness is something which is most commonly prescribed, used, evidence-based. It delivers what it promises. You feel peace, you feel more happier. It has also been seen that it decreases your psych issues, improves well-being, improves coping skills. And it is a great asset to mankind if you do mindfulness meditation or other meditations. But for seeker of truth, this all what it provides is byproduct. For a seeker of truth, he wants to transcend birth and death cycle. He wants to live eternally, so he does not have to do any mindfulness meditation or any practice whatsoever. I am telling you this because here the method is just an excuse to start on this journey. But what eventually happens is grace. So the one who is using the method disappears in the whole process. He disappears. I use he but I am very much respectful to all females. So don't worry if I say he. Sometimes people say, you always say he, you don't say she. Then someone will say, you have to say it. I'm just explaining that he, she, it doesn't matter. It's You are not even this body. What about the sex? So let's go beyond these things when you're listening to this. What is the path of freedom 100% leave aside all methods first and foremost is that the one who is looking for truth reality somehow has to convince himself that there is something beyond what I perceive through my mind, body, intellect, what I am doing in my life and what is happening and improvements in my egoistic nature. There is something beyond it. And that something is definitely there. Whether I know it or not, it is there. So that is the first step. Because if you don't believe there is a destination, there is a thing, there is a goal, how would you look for it. At least you should have some faith. So that is the first step, having some belief in that thing which is right now might not be there, but it is there. 
having faith that there is something there. How that faith comes? That faith comes from satsang, when someone is talking to you, written in the scriptures, written in the people who have experienced it. Sometimes it also comes from religion. So that is most important. If you have doubt, you will never be there because if you are, your mind is in doubt that there's something like this, perhaps may, may, may not be. I speak to so many people who call them religious, but when you dig deep, they say, look, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe there is something, maybe there is not, but I'm just doing just as a ritual because my parents used to do it. This is what I've been taught. When you go and you look into the people's psyche, some of them are just using as a habit. They're not doing with that deep faith that there is something like that. And then what they're doing is just a ritual. It's nothing to do with their any seeking for anything. It's more mechanical. So first thing is that whatever you have to do, you should have firm faith. There is some energy, some entity which we can tap into and we can be free. From this present situation, we can be free. So if that we can do, one, one thing is done. First obst obstacle is out. Then the second thing is that one should be 100% sure that it is achievable. Like you can get it. And one of the things is, is that if others can get it, why don't you get it? Then people say, oh, look, it used to be in other yugas or thousands of years ago, or it happens in one in million, one in billion, and I can't go in a cave and I have a family. All these are excuses of the mind. When this comes, then you should remember that this is the simplest and easiest it's not difficult. So there is something like this. People have achieved it. And the third thing is, it is not difficult. Bhagwan always used to say, Ati Sulubham. Very easy, not easy, very easy. Whatever your mind says, it is difficult. Say very easy. Keep repeating. Whenever it says very difficult or impossible, you remind to the mind, it is very easy. Change your perspective about it. It is very easy. Just, okay, I'll tell you one thing. If Bhagwan Ramana Maharishi came, he gave a path of self-inquiry and no one is able to succeed. What a stupid path it is. I would suggest don't adopt self-inquiry path if you can't succeed. Do you think he gave you a path and nobody will be able to succeed and just keep practicing self-inquiry till the age of 99 and then die. This path he gave because it is easiest. He said, Ati Sulbham, very easy. Easiest. So always remember, this is the, this is the biggest trap of the mind. It, it agrees that yes, there is some entity, some Brahman, some Shiva, some energy. There is something we can transcend into it. Yes, a lot of people have done in centuries all over the world from different religions, sects, no religion, nothing, but in different ways, a lot of people have done it. So this is something is there. I'm 100% sure all the people on path of seeking, they are convinced about this. Then the second, they are also convinced that it is doable. There is a thing and people have done it. The third obstacle is the most important. People think that they can't do it. Everyone else can do it. They can't do it. Because I have done bad karmas or I have so many responsibilities and all. All this is just excuse of the mind. Understand this transcendence has nothing to do with karma. Nothing to do with your bad karma also. Scriptures say the worst person in the world can achieve it instantaneously if his longing is intense enough. And, and we all know that we are not the worst in this world. Or even if we are the worst in this world, we can still do it. 
So never ever take this notion that it is only Mahatmas and saints and sages who can achieve it. No one else can do it. We can do it. It is very easy. So these are the only obstacles. If you believe there is some energy, something into which we can transcend, doable and I can do it and it's very easy, then that's all. Then you have settled your all wrong notions and you are now just there to just, it will open up. It is unfolding in you. Because it is us. Only obstacle is we think it is not possible. Now once we have agreed to it, then automatically the energy stays here only. You can call it instantaneous realization also. If you are 100% longing for it, and I'm telling you this moment you can get it, what else? What practice? Who will do the practice? The practitioner will merge in it, disappear. Nothing is left. What practice? What thought? For whom thoughts? Who cares about thoughts? All this construct of Maya, from ego to the form and word, gets dismantled the moment you put your energy here. You don't move your energy. Don't worry about mind and ego and intellect and body and all that, so many concepts. We are this pure energy. If our attention on energy, we just stay as energy. What happens to the body and other things? The one who is caring about all these things just merges in it. That formation which has come out of this energy has receded and just settled and no trace is left. It's not coming and going, it is just one way path. When you accept you are Brahman, there is nothing else left. What practice, what self-inquiry? What word? What to gain, what to lose? These are only thoughts. This energy is a thoughtless state, 24 hours, eternally. It never ends because it has never started, it was always there. It is beyond nature. It is all pervading everywhere. Any part of the world, any part of the cosmos you are, it is right there. When people traveled from long distances to meet Bhagwan, came by ships in journeys of two months, three months, spending all their savings in it, Bhagwan used to say there was no need. Self is everywhere. You don't even have to move. Wherever you are, it is there. I know so many of my friends who attend so many things again and again. It is good, but then attending one time sincerely can just do your job. You don't have to vipassana 20 times. 
One is enough if you understand fully. Whatever you do, understand. Eventually, you have to just settle in. Not just doing, doing. We are so busy with doership. That's why people get attracted to the teachers who teach lot of techniques, especially if the techniques are a bit more complicated. Because the ego wants something to be done to achieve something. If your mind gets to this patience in settling in, no technique is needed. Nothing is needed. Right now we see and we think I am this body and whatever, male or female or person or job. Nobody has to remind us. We know it. Same way when you tap into awareness, no one has to remind you or you don't have to meditate on it to keep remembering that I am awareness. I am formless. I am unchanging. To whom would you say? Who says this? Only a fool will say this. We don't go out and tell people, I am a human being. It is, it is. The way this world looks so real, when we settle in that energy, we understand that we have put all our money in dream. Nothing to gain, nothing to lose. It is insignificant. What people think about you, what they don't think about you, who cares? As I told in the past, someone from Kerala wrote Bhagwan's biography in Malayalam, completely rubbish. He wrote he was married, he had these many kids, he was a lawyer. Bhagwan just did grammatical correction, sent it back. One of Bhagwan devotees, Kunju Swami, he got very offended. He said to Bhagwan that all is wrong, all is false, you didn't correct anything. And Bhagwan told him, Do you think this word is real? I keep telling you this all is false, do you listen to me? And Bhagwan said, You send that script back to this Malayali. He said, I don't want it to be published, but somehow <laughs> that script came back to Ashram because he had no funds to publish it. And he asked Ramana Ashram to publish it. Then Bhagwan gave it to Kunju Swami, whatever you want to do, look, it has come back to you. You should have that much of faith in that energy. When we are the source, we don't have to worry. Only ego worries what people will say. We always see our image in other people's eyes, what they think about me, what they will feel about me. We spend so much of energy in these false images all the time, trying to fix this rather than fixing ourselves into that pure self. Who deceives us? Only our own mind. When we surrender complete to the divine energy, things move in perfect harmony as they have to. As a matter of fact, even in ego, things move in perfect harmony. But we don't understand. 
because we have created our own small world conditioned by mind which thinks in some other way as divine planning when they both are same we are happy when they both are different we are unhappy when ego is gone then everything is happening according to our own will isn't it that pure awareness is doing everything then we stay in perfect bliss without any ego intentions some people call it choiceless choicelessness choicelessness is the biggest choice you can make because if there you give up to any anything happens you are happy then you have ticked all the boxes all choice a is mine b is mine c and d is mine e is mine none is mine all of them are mine so whatever happens you are happy mind is at complete rest without any wave any ripple nothing that is our true nature someone is sitting on a bike and driving this bike all over the world and says i have no rest i have no rest i have no rest what can i do please help me and someone says get out of the bike just leave it and then still you stay on it and then feel this stress this is exactly we are riding on our mind and then we complain just get rid of this mind then what is left is us old people are stuck up in the past of this body mind complex so many stories to tell or to repent or to get attracted to and young people are attached to this story which will happen in future i want to do this i want to marry this i want this much of money they are attached to the future of the story and the people in the middle range they are attached to both stories only a yogi sits without any story he disowns all his story no personal story people who love stories they meet new people they get very excited because there's lot to tell and lot to listen and it's good conversation you know and then it gets bored and the other person doesn't want to listen to your story you have finished all your story then you look for other people to bore more people different people and then this is what we call it a good chat keep us busy once you give up these stories you start loving yourself so much so that no need of any company one is the best company and two becomes noise
they put convicts criminals into jail in a lockup a yogi might think would surprise that what is wrong in it how beautiful that life someone is cooking food for you you have a space no one to disturb you but you can see that convict is such a doer isn't it staying alone in that lockup is so is a punishment put your mind in that lockup and you are free and the best way to put this mind into eternal lockup is disengaging giving up all relationships giving up all work to it patanjali says strong likes and dislikes are two main reasons definitely rag and dwesh attachments and aversions are the root cause of this mind keep ticking giving us a conditioned story whatever happens on the stage of word there are always divided opinions half people says this is right half people says the other thing is right all our own conditioning so much so that we can die for that conditioning or we can kill others for that conditioning mind is a dangerous gadget you can't trust mind only thing which is trustworthy is this pure awareness it has no concept it is impartial neutral it's nothing but love unconditional love this love has no purpose where there is a purpose there is no freedom even on path of spirituality lot of people feel like that as as if they are doing business they say do i do japa 100000 times or i go to this place i have done this i have done 20 years of practice nothing is happening i need it i you know i am well deserving whatever you know when we put so much of conditioning that means there is no love we think we will do this much amount of puja or bhakti or ritual or practice and it will we will get it if this is our mindset it will never happen it's not based on quantity it is based on quality you don't do anything you just open with your heart it will happen some people count how many they are doing uh, in india it is a very common thing they keep counting i feel it is shameful to count how much names you take of god do you think you are trying to whom are you pleasing yourself or god or what when our whole energy is for that awareness it keeps remembering all the time and it does in a very secretive way never tells anyone it even hides from its own ego because in a way it's conspiracy against ego
ego will dissolve when there is so much of love for the divine. Who in this world is ready to dissolve himself or herself? So only the divine is left. Who is ready to sacrifice all what one has accumulated as a person? as an individual. Who is ready to become nothing? Who is ready to just stay in self? No other entertainment indulgence except self. Even as a concept, it's scary to a lot of people. They would like to be called as this, 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 and the ninth or tenth thing as freedom also, moksha also. They keep that as an entity along with other things. Be so much involved in remembrance of self that all your identities get dissolved in it, nothing is left. No trace of I and me and mine is left. Only all pervading awareness is felt, experienced and lived. And everything, every form is seen as that only. Nothing sentient or insentient. Everything is that. Ignorant people are part of it. Seekers are part of it. Enlightened beings are part of it. Rock, plant, animals, birds, water, air, everything is part of it. It's all inclusive. It's all one. It is no religion. Its religion is universality, one only. Everything is one. No divisions. No hierarchy. Guru is part of it, God is part of it. Everyone is part of it. Go so deep into it that you can never differentiate anything apart from it. Mind dreams, mind sleeps, mind awaking dream, mind continues. Body moves, body works, body interacts. 
For external world, it might look exactly the same as you were before. But internally, there is no one who is doing anything. People think it's normal, but you think it is some magic. Things are just happening on its own in the most perfect way. Though I am not doing it, you, your own life surprises you more than anything else. While for the rest of the world, it might have no, made no changes. Emptiness is the biggest gain. Understand this truth. When a house is full of clutter, And when you empty it, how nice we feel. Not sure whether you know or you have seen any hoarders. If you enter into a hoarder's house, you are pathological. There is not even an inch in the house which is free of space. Everything is everywhere. Exactly like our mind. No space. Where do you want God to come? Where do you want to sit? Make God sit in your mind. Where? Where is this space? So cleansing is important. Empty, empty, empty. And the best way to empty your mind is to put all your devotion to the God within. You can call it by any name or no name, doesn't matter, but your attention should be there. This attention is like a fire. It does internal cleansing. It just finishes everything. This attention is very powerful tool. But if we are interested in politics around and this and that and gossip and what's happening in family, I'm not saying that you don't have to sort out matters, but don't be involved as an individual, as a doer. Just sort out and stay as awareness. Then you will take the right decision unbiased. True bhakti is to stay in awareness all the time. When we stay as awareness, whether we are singing bhajans or not, that internal remembrance is always going on. Use silence in your speech, whatever you speak to anyone. It should be impregnated with silence. Silence is the biggest teaching. Mm. 
Bhagwan never allowed anyone to record anything. His voice. This is the most profound message. A lot of people kept tape recorders and other devices to record his voice. They always failed. I heard that couple of times they succeeded, but then the tape has no voice in it. Like somehow it got some corruption or something. This is the power of intention. If Bhagwan's intention is nobody can record, you cannot record. Understand when the mind is not working. There is divine silence. And this divine silence has energy to create anything from nowhere. It is so powerful. It is source of all what we see around us. That unmanifested power is Shiva. Free from all illusions of Maya. Maya's reach is only up to mind. Or you can say mind is Maya. And thought forms is its creation. As in deep sleep, no thought and no word, nothing. And with movement of thought, you see waking dream and sleep dream. Contemplate on this silence all the time. Start living in this silence without running away from any situation. Move in this silence all the time. Let the silence decide for you. Let the silence do or not do things.
the man of complete surrender feels that I have surrendered. Now, if something has to happen, auspicious or whatever, I am, who am I to decide about it? You do as you please. Or if you don't want to do it, don't do it. But I am not going to lose my peace now for any reason. When we ask for something, we need ego to ask. When Bhagwan had a cancer and people said, Bhagwan, why don't you pray God <laughs> that it goes away? He said, whom should I pray? Who? You can go to something. Ego can go to God. But when buck stops there, nothing beyond it. Where can I get that intention to pray to whom? First is I need an intention. There is no mind to put any intention. Then even if there is an intention to whom should I go, there is nothing beyond me. Each and every talk of Bhagwan is a golden word for our freedom. Not just to talk that Bhagwan said this and Bhagwan said that. Each and every word spoken by him is a sutra for our freedom. He was called as the man of golden hand. His Tamil name as a child, I think they used to call him by some name which means golden hand. But he had golden silence, golden words he spoke. Bhagwan was absolute truth, nothing but truth. And that truth is in all of us. Speak from there all the time. Be there all the time. That is the best service we can do to Bhagwan. Abiding in pure self. When we stay here in our heart, we understand Bhagwan completely. We cannot make any mistake in any translation, any understanding what he wanted to convey. Only source can know the source. Rest others can only interpret it but can never be perfect in their interpretation. Allow yourself to merge in that pure self. Only you have to allow yourself. No one else can do it for you. Just be open. 
surrender to the power within bow down and just be humble to that pure energy let it take over everything you keep quiet keep quiet means don't give any work to your mind work to mind is always about me mine i what is my profit in anything that's what the mind is it works for ego ego is the one who feels i am this body mind establish in self leave this space of ego mind transcend from it take this jump leap of faith take a jump enough so you don't come back don't keep practicing to jump and stay there once we are on the other side it's a path of no return in every sense if you see someone has returned they never went it's not coming and going only ego feels like this so many people say i was there i stayed there and then i came back ego has no clue mind has no clue about that there is an aura of this energy when we sit together in satsang or we listen to the talk in satsang it is like you're tapping into this energy instantaneously now how to keep it and how to grow this by following rules and restraint yam and niyam if you indulge after this after an hour after 10 hours after 2 days after 1 week you lose it you know something which is most precious it is most difficult to keep it like you must have seen wild flowers and weed they just grow but something which is very precious very precious flower it's so hard so difficult to grow that plant and to keep it among all the beings in this world human birth and to take care of the human child is most difficult others they start flying in week or two and they start feeding themselves but the human child you have to take care for many years same is with this subtle energy of self it can come to you 
but then you need to know how to take care of it. Once you get it, then don't go out and have few drinks and have a big dance and party and lose it. Be with it. Spend time with it. Nurture it. It will give you all the right directions, how to behave, how to move, how much to sleep, what to eat. You don't have to read any book on it. You don't have to consult anyone. It will tell you everything. Intuitively, you know what to whom to meet, where to go, where not to go, what to eat, how much to sleep. It does everything. But listen to it once it has come to you. First thing is people are not believing in it. Second is they believe they don't think that will happen to it. Then it happens to you. Now you just have to keep it and grow. It is like a very sensitive guest. It gets offended very easily. It comes to you very slowly, silently, comes to you, you feel it and then you do something, you show anger, not to that, to anyone or greed or show smartness of ego in any form, it slips out. And then it can take another few years. I don't know how long it takes again then. So once it comes to you, try to be quiet. That is the best way to please it. Spend with time with it as much as you can. Let it grow. Let it speak to you in silence. You spend time with yourself. Spend more time in solitude. Take leave, stop working, whatever you have to do. Bhagwan took such a big break. It came to him. He could not study. And then he just left everything. And spent beautiful time with his energy. He was not doing any practice. I have to keep saying this again and again. Because on YouTube, every second channel says Bhagwan came to Arunachala. He did a lot of tapas and practice and he got enlightened. He only was in his own company, enjoying his Shiva in him. It is so beautiful. He was so much enjoying his own bliss that he stopped speaking. It was hard for him to speak for many years. Divine awareness is here right now with all of us. Acknowledge it. Be with it. And stay here.
ओम शांति 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 थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू